It's a marvellous day out. Lancashire today playing North Ants and all their fans full of high expectations. Lancashire really firm favourites and North Ants after a bit of a jumble of a season. Delighted to be here and we're hoping for the best. Let's take a look at the teams now. Well, Lancashire, there's David Hughes there. It's his ninth one-day final. His first was 20 years ago in 1970. And that very hefty seam attack. Difficult to dominate. Wazim Akram, De Freitas, Allard, Austin and Watkinson. Now, North Ants, Lamb is the leader. He'll lead with the bat. And two slow bowlers. There's Richard Williams and Nick Cook in their lineup. And David Capel, lucky to make the final count because he has broken a finger in his left hand. Well, the umpires, David Shepherd and John Holder, no strangers to big matches. Lancashire won the toss, and they decided to field. We'll join it now with the fourth ball of the first over. There's no score, and Allert is bowling to Fordham. Yes, Runs on the ball. Leg buys. Umpire David Shepherd is standing at the pavilion end. some movement here for Paul Arrod. He's pitching about off stump and cuts back down the hill, just flicking the thigh pad. Oh, it's Philip de Pretus to open the bowling from the nursery end. That's a good shot by Fulton. Just racing away down the slope there towards uh, the mound stand. John Holder is standing at the nursery end. Yeah. Oh, well done. First blood to Lancashire. It was a good catch, low down. And... Uh, Allard had a very safe pair of hands. Well, that's a good start, certainly, for Lancashire. Nigel Felton, a gritty, gutsy player who gets stuck in well. But this one's angled across. It just keeps on going. There doesn't seem to be a great deal of movement. Probably just left him a little. And uh, it just about carried. A new batsman is Wayne Larkins. Fresh from that double century against Essex, which may have been a timely one. It's Fordham taking strike. But Alan Fordham's heart gave a bit of a leap there. Well, this was pretty straight. It, it just nipped back. He's playing rounded. He's looking to try and catch up the movement and hit it through mid wicket area. Well, you could say that. Fordham doesn't mind the pull or the hook shot. We saw him play one to them down to Southampton. Yeah. Given to Philip De Freitas. That was a good delivery. He's bowled two very good balls to pick up the two wickets. One caught by Allard and that one Alan Fordham, LBW. John Holder, the umpire at the nursery end. He's mainly run the ball away from the bat. This one comes back up the hill, not forward at all. Really gets caught in two minds, half forward, defeated by the break back. Nineteen for two. Alan Lamb. I think a skipper will be well pleased with what's going on. A 
That's a lovely take by Warren Hig. What a morning for Northamptonshire because they now are 20 for 3. There's Larkin just pushing forward, and that was a goodish delivery. It just left him down the slope a little bit, which you can expect to do at Lords. Then that De Freitas is bowling from slopes from right to left as he's bowling, and the ball has a tendency to run away from the right handed batsman. Rob Bailey, Bailey. Come and see in uh, at number five. Uh, David Caper was listed to be at five, but Bailey's coming in ahead of him now. We know that Caper has a broken finger. That was Mike Watkinson, and uh, well, the misfields cost four runs. Yes, I think Lamett that's a little bit harder than probably Mike Watkinson thought. It only looked like a defensive shot, but he timed that rather well and just did him a bit on pace there. Nicely timed shot. It's one of Bailey's strengths. looking to get on that front foot. He doesn't miss too much when it's pitched up because he's always forward waiting for it. Oh, he's gone this time. Indeed he has, and Defratus, what a morning he's having. It's his fourth wicket. Bailey has gone for seven, and now Northamptonshire 38 for four, and in all sorts of trouble. Yes, you see, Bailey was trying to come forward again, not quite forward length, and that was a long way from his body. Jubilant Lancashire side, just look what they've accomplished within the first hour of the start of this game. The new batsman is David Capel. David Capel has broken a little finger on his left hand. He's broken it in two places, and there's medical advice against him playing. But he's supervised the construction of a reinforced left batting glove. And he's given him. He's given him, and well, Defratus now. Nobody can ever get all ten in one day competitions, can they? He's got the first five. Well, that pitch round about the off stump, and Lamb well, not really getting anywhere there, and that ball is in just below the knee roll. New batsman Richard Williams. Little did he think that he'd be at the crease within the first hour. Well, those five wickets have come in 35 deliveries and the last two in three. Oh, nearly six. Just, just going 
away down the hill again, but uh, William's not really getting in a very good position. Lovely shot. <laughs> Apart from a few clips on the leg side from Rob Bailey, that's been the best shot we've seen from North Ants batsman this morning. Richard Williams. A lot for the first time, just dropping that little bit short and rocks back and really hammers that away through the covers. It's a great shot. Oh, another cracking shot. This time out over pitching slightly. So positive the speed with which Williams picked out that half volley. Suddenly batting begins to look easy after those two balls. Doesn't really get his foot across to it, but he keeps the the arms flowing in the right direction, the shoulders in line, it's through the line and through extra cover. One off the back foot, now one off the front. There's De Freitas, who's now been replaced by Wazi Makram. And there's Wazi Makram's NatWest career. Ten matches, 16 wickets, 20. And a strike rate, really 32 balls. He takes a wicket. That's four runs. Nice little deflection by David Cable. And Cable's been in tremendous form with the bat this year. 50 comes up, that's 52 now for the loss of five wickets. So my Watkinson uh, is going to replace Paul Allen. He's gone. Williams going for another free shot outside the off stump. Bowled by Watkinson, and yet another North Hands batsman fails to make double figures. Watkinson has bowled a little bit down the leg side, but this one he manages to get on the right line. It's wide of the off stump, it's short of a length back. It comes back sharply. Williams trying to hammer the, the ball way through the offside, doesn't really get across to it, doesn't move his feet. And really, it comes straight back through the gate and clips the top of the off stump. Good delivery. David Ripley is the incoming batsman. Come on, lads, he said. There's uh, still more work to be done here. That's a nice shot, too. The second one he's played like that. Watkinson just pushing it down leg side there. Tomatkin's not going to bowl this over from the nursery, and it's going to be Austin. off the mark. Well, that's as good a stroke as anything that's been played this morning. That's a beautiful strike. Lovely, crisp, square cut. Watkinson to Ripley. Oh, well played on. Ripley is gone. We'll see that it's short. And there's just a little bit of movement back in, but he gets the really a bottom edge he'd done it once before actually and he just missed the stumps this one he drags it straight onto the stumps 
New batsman is Kirtley Ambrose. 87 for 7 when that wicket fell, and Ripley made 13. And uh, you can't have uh, much more superstition than that with an 87 and a 13 in the one dismissal. individual style of how to do it. Just that little bit of width that the freighters didn't want to provide took full advantage of it. <laughs> A great bowling performance from Philip de Freitas. Twelve overs, five maidens, five for 26. Takes a sweater. That's uh, as many as he's allowed to bowl. Yeah. Freitas is the fielder. Hundred up for North Hands. That'll be a welcome relief. It's not many. But at least they know the opposition must make it. No, it's Ian Austin bowling to David Capel. You've got to admire a stroke play like that. And David Capel, really, it's not only a brave innings in the context of the game, it's, it's becoming an important one. At least he's on the edge of taking his side to something to bowl against. Yes, Austin dropping short and Capel pulling that away, really a front foot pull. Now, Wazim Akram bowling to Kirtley Ambrose. Well, there's a lovely shot. Having said he doesn't hit it very hard, that was hit hard enough. This is Paul Allen. What a way to go, and that's the end of Capel's innings. A brave innings, run out for 36. As unlucky a dismissal as you can get. Just watch how it happened. But the ball is driven back quite hard. Just, just the fingertips flicked on. He then goes out again, and the ball hits the stumps. He makes his ground, then goes to look for the run, and the ball runs onto the stumps. That just about sums up Northamptonshire's day. And the new batsman, Nick Cook. shot brave effort at mid off to dive and stop Mike Atherton at uh, mid off well he's certainly beginning to hit the ball very hard now it was a great effort by Atherton oh. 
Another lovely straight drive by Ambrose. Great cheer goes out from the North Hans corner of the ground to say that De Freitas had failed in his last ditch effort to stop it. Another glorious straight drive. He's hit three or four of these now, and they really are very impressive. Just missing the stumps. De Freitas attempts to pick it up. It was a great try. No ball. One hundred and fifty for the last eight wickets. That's a big hit. Four runs to mid-wicket. And this is the time to play this sort of shot. Well, it's not a half volley by any means. It's quite short, and he just swings right the way through the line, hits it almost on the up, pulls it away past square leg. <laughs> Too quick for Nick Cook. Really is a major advantage to be able to bowl a ball this quick. Makes it very hard for a tail ender to set himself to play any sort of shot. Oh, he's getting him out. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Well, you must say that North Ants have had extreme bad luck as well. Courtly Ambrose can't believe his bad luck. It didn't happen to me, he says, but I'm sad to say it did. Run out for 48 in the most unfortunate manner. Well, it's a fine shot by Nick Cook. He middles this, he hits it very hard. Once again, the hand, the deflection, and a fine decision again by David Shepard. Banned very correctly, Kirtley. Got up there with three overs to go, just beginning to play some big shots. Would have loved to be around for the last over to have given it a real go, but it was not to be. 166 for nine. Austin to Robinson. <laughs> what was that for? Is it the, the first run he's ever got? Or. It's certainly the first run in the competition this year for Mark Robinson. <laughs> Nick Cook says, right, run for anything. Last ball. Oops. Full toss. Played and missed. Out goes the middle stump. 171 is the final score, but at least North Ants did extremely well to extend their innings. It's an attempted Yorker. It's a little bit overpitched, but it has the required effect. The middle stump goes out of the ground, and Nick Cook in a vain attempt to hit that last ball through the offside for four. And that's the profile of the North Ants disaster. Top five batsmen all failing to reach ten. But then David Capel, really superbly, I thought, got together an innings of 36, very brave indeed with that broken finger. And Kirtley Ambrose, too, 48, both run out, both run out at the bowler's end, the deflection off the bowler's hand onto the stumps. Really unlucky that. But 171, scarcely an adequate total. The bowling figures all look good, but especially Philip de Freitas. 12 overs, five maidens, five for 26. And Paul Allett, in his benefit year, experience, accuracy, 12 overs, three maidens, naught for 29. The pick of the bowlers. So Lancashire going to bat required 172 to win at a run rate of 2.87 per over. Let's join them now. It's the fourth ball of the first over. Ambrose bowls to Mendes. There's no score. And Lancashire are on their way.
Oh, they'll have to be quick here. Well, had to hit. This will give Northamptonshire hope. The ball is still seeming. Last ball of the last over, he defeated Mendes on the outside of his bat. This time, cuts it back inside. Painful blow. I don't think there's anyone bowled a better Yorker. Six foot eight and a, there's another few feet on top with a very long arm. It's a very difficult one to pick up. Bowler gets down on it and he manages to bounce it over, over his stumps. Long chase for the man at uh, deep fine leg and good running from uh, Gohan Mendes. Came back very quickly. The ball only just drifted away behind square leg, but he very quickly sensed there could be three runs there. Again, going past uh, Fowler's outside edge there again. Still no luck for this uh, Northampton opening pair. Ball didn't do a great deal then, it was just angled across. And Graham Fowler has a knack of playing and missing. And smashing the next ball for four. And that is out, and the breakthrough has been made. And Fowler has been getting pretty fretful. There's no real need for him to have done so because they've a lot of time. But there's the wicket, and again, Mark Robinson, the hero. Fowler goes. We're in the tenth over, 16 for one. Well, Graham Fowler, I think, just trying to whip this away on the leg side. Probably caught the leading edge there. So the ball hasn't come onto the bat particularly quickly on this wicket. That's been one of the problems. It's just stayed on the wicket long enough for it to alter direction off the seam and make scoring pretty difficult. Now, that is just, um, let's say, youthful enthusiasm. Wasn't much going for that particular appeal. Well, there's a lot more excitement from Mark Robinson than from the umpire. So there's no way that could be given out. It nipped back quite a bit. It's above the knee roll on the pad. So apart from probably missing leg stump and going over the top, it was a pretty good shout. One of several players who've missed quite a portion of this season through injury, Nick Cook. He broke a finger in the early part of the season and missed about oh, four or five weeks. Gone for the big one. Oh, my word. Well, that should have been out. He hit it hard, but the parry was there. And that's how it's run for Northampton today. Yes, I think Mendes made his mind up before he bowled. It was straight at him. It went pretty quick. When you're concentrating on your bowling, sometimes it's not all that easy, but he'll be disappointed at not catching it. I think the batsman, in fact, impeded him a little there. 
nothing intentionally but uh... yes it just show what pressure can build up on batsmen if the bowlers can keep it tight for 10 overs or so oh that's a terrific delivery Well, I think that does show that the ball is probably just going through the top a little bit. It felt like a little bit all day. That certainly took off. Very fortunate for Mendes that with Slip and Gully in, the ball went safe because it really did lob up. And uh, unfortunately, it just went in front of square for the North Ants fielders. better shot it's the first boundary of the innings fourth North Hans bowler now David Capel well that's the sort of thing that um, shouldn't happen but it does Bozzy Macram, Laurie Brown to his right. They don't look anxious faces, do they? Oh, that's out. That's out. The capel strikes. Mendis goes. Well, suddenly, who knows? 28 for two. We're in the 16th over. Mendis caught at the wicket for 14. That's exactly what Northampton she wanted. Well, there's no doubt about it. Mendes has been getting very anxious here, yeah, trying to hit the ball too hard. Just comes back on him, tucks him up a little bit there as he was looking to play the square cut. And a straightforward catch for a replay. He was having difficulty getting the ball away, either front foot or back foot. And just got a little bit anxious there. be interesting to look at the leg side field placings for Fairbrother. The spin will be taking the ball that way. At the moment, he's only got one man out deep. And that's a deep square leg to the left of the picture there. And the arc of four, all saving the single. There's a competent start. There's three runs for Fairbrother. He's had a very consistent competition this year. He got an unbeaten 50 in the first round against Durham and then followed up with 39 against Derbyshire. And then 86 against Gloucestershire and 48 against Middlesex. goes fair brother and uh, shows the form he's in certainly the ball's hitting the middle of the bat fair brother is certainly come out prepared to play his natural game you only need half an hour of him and uh, suddenly the pressure would be off oh, well you won't get much simpler ones than that a couple of the North Hans players can hardly believe it. The bowler can't. Ambrose can't. Now, what's happened here? Simple catching practice. That really is the easiest of the lot. There goes Fairbrother, and he's been looking for that, really. He's prepared to throw the bat now. Three good runs. Well, there we go. A few minutes before tea or not. And this is the way that really he's dominated English county cricket this summer.
really, it's uh, almost miraculous the timing that Fairbrother is conjuring up. Every other batsman in the match today has struggled, but he's just stroking it away as though it's uh, a perfect batting pitch. Atherton quite rightly now giving his partner the strike and uh, be interesting to see whether we get any change in field from Cook and also if their brother continues with the onslaught Alan Lamb it's been a satisfactory session for him but it could have been so much better well a lovely little shot really was because that was an improvisation there it spotted the or leg buys in fact given so we'll give their brother <laughs> credit for something he didn't do but in fact he's starting now to disrupt this Northamptonshire grip that the bowlers had set they really see just going for a fine little touch there didn't get it off the pad instead he's trying to find the gap And then picking his gap. Hmm. That's a good three runs. Atherton did well there. But Richard Williams coming on to bowl. He'll only get the one over in before T. Two more to go. for two and got it Kirtley Ambrose really is uh, he's having a nightmare of a game in the field he's gone for one four more and this looks like being a decisive innings well, of course, the problem of a shorter boundary tavern size is you've got right and left hander. This one is from round the wicket, it's pitching middle, it would have missed leg, and it's hit very hard indeed. And uh, the feeling is in the game a little bit that maybe Fabra that's a bit of a weakness, he doesn't play the quick stuff quite as well. Oh, they're going to try Ambrose, and that's a correct decision. Well, Kirtley should be fired up. He made 48, then was run out in unfortunate circumstances. And then he dropped their brother. I won't say it was the simplest catch I've ever seen, but it gets into the top ten quite comfortably. And you can't provide that much width for a player like Fairbrother. Just loves it. Three balls only for Fairbrother's 40 runs. Atherton, 57 balls for his 19. A lovely shot. Gosh, that was good timing. And he'll get the third as well. That's good cricket from Fairbrother. Now it's going to be David Capel. He'll bowl to Neil Fairbrother. <laughs> Given that a bit, smashed it away through extra cover. to reach the half century congratulations from Atherton
think he's quite pleased. Well, that's away. Just a little flip through mid wicket, and that's four runs. Another big hit, straight over Cook, straight into the crowd. Beautifully picked up by Fairbrother. That's a hundred partnership off 132 balls. It's in the air. It's dropped again. Well, Nick Cook, he dropped one off his own bowling. He had Fairbrother dropped at mid-on, and Fairbrother dropped again at long on this time. North hand side looking quite happy there. Not so cheerful in the middle. And that's got up and is caught by Ambrose. Fairbrother the goes for 81, but he's done his job. With the help of Northampton Shepherd also, thanks to a lovely range of strokes. Just the sort of innings on the slow pitch when really batsmen could get bogged down. And his teammates appreciate the full value of that performance by Neil Fairbrother. It's one day cricket, you had back to ball, and that little man has done just that. Larkins, that three brings up the 150. It's a lovely shot. Cook gave that some air and uh, looking for the miss hit. He didn't get it. It was beautifully timed. It's his fifth boundary. This is one of Watkinson's strengths, and uh, he's a beautifully clean hitter of the ball. That's a great stroke. Well, another great shot. All Atherton can do is admire and congratulate. And you've seen uh, two of the younger Lancashire Brigade come in and really smack the ball all over Lords. In the end, a comfortable looking win it's been. Well, there's four of them, or is it six? It is, in fact, six, and what a way to finish. Watkinson and Atherton congratulate each other. They win. Jubilant balcony there. Alan Ormrod there on the right of the picture. Congratulations all the way round. And Lancashire now are the most successful side in this 60-over competition. Just a little stutter at the start when Mendes and Fowler went, but then Atherton ground his way to a steady 38 not out. Fairbrother, quite brilliant, flamboyant, took all his luck. 81 runs in very fast tempo and a tremendous finishing burst by Mike Watkinson, not out 24. 173 for three. A comfortable win then for Lancashire. North Ants bowling. Little they could do, the wickets to Robinson and to Capel and Williams. The key bowler there, Kirtley Ambrose, did well enough. Ten overs, one maiden, 23 runs only, but no wickets. And so Lancashire won the match, not only by seven wickets, but they had 14 overs and two balls to spare. And of course it was a delighted David Hughes on the balcony, well, 20 years after his first final, receiving the NatWest Trophy.
And the man of the match, Philip de Freitas. The obvious choice, I guess, it was made by Fred Truman. And after the presentation...